In Luke chapter 11, we find a very interesting passage of scripture where Jesus is teaching. And it's just a few short verses long, but there's a lot to be said there about our relationship with God in the sense of his provision, his protection, and his authority in our life. In verse 11 of chapter 11 of Luke, Now suppose one of you fathers is asked by his son for a fish. He will not give him a snake instead of a fish, will he? Or if he is asked for an egg, he will not give him a scorpion, will he? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? What we have to see here is that he is drawing a parallel picture between an earthly father, a human father, and the son or a child. And I think we could easily say a mother and a daughter, or a mother and a son, or a father and a daughter. It's the relationship that matters here, not specifically who it is. That being connected over to how God works in our lives, okay? And this is important that we understand. And he says, he uses two illustrations. He says, first of all, if your son comes to you and he asks for a fish, you're not going to give him a snake. Now, you have to understand what a snake is. A snake is a potentially hazardous and deadly animal, okay? A fish isn't. We eat fish. Fish, for all intents and reasons, we would call them domesticated in the water. I mean, that's what fish are there for, is for diet. For us to eat, Jesus ate fish. You know, uh, and we have to think about that too, okay? And so he's saying it's, this is a normal staple of our diet, something that sustains our health. He parallels it too with what they ate in the Middle East a lot of too, eggs, okay? This is not uncommon at all. And he says, if your son asks you for an egg, will you give him a scorpion? Again, a poisonous bite from a scorpion would kill you. In other words, the difference between what will nourish your life and what will take your life. And he says, no, you won't do that. You know, normal, non-psychotic people don't treat their kids that way. Yes, our kids frustrate us from time to time. That's normal. Sometimes we say, I'm not giving them anything anymore. You know, But that's we get over that. And if you love your children and they're in need, you help them. Even if you're old, you help them. Well, then he makes the comparison between God giving us the Holy Spirit the staple of our spiritual life. In other words, what we need to conduct spiritual living the way God wants us to, we need the guidance and we need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in our lives to live rightly before God through Christ Jesus. And he says, if you people in your human condition are sinful and evil, and you're willing to help your kids like you do, which is good, by the way, okay, not belittling that, Think of how great your father's love is for you in that he'll give you the staple of or the necessity of your spiritual life in the Holy Spirit. That is really a big picture that we need to draw where Jesus takes the physical, the literal, and then draws it into the spiritual for us to see and know that God loves us so much. He cares about our life. And if we're right spiritually, what goes on physically in our life, regardless of what it is, disease, war, all kinds of problems we can have in the flesh, that can be dealt with through the Spirit. And so the gift of God and the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ is that which will sustain us physically, or at least, if nothing else, help us to understand and see why this is happening for our own good in the big picture. And if it does cause our mortal uh, death, we are still blessed by God with the gift of the Holy Spirit because he loves us that much.